Hi, I'm Mary Mance, creator of Twisted Yarns. Today, we'll explore the techniques and tools that will speed your machine knitting along. While the half hour hat lives up to its name, it makes a warm addition to any winter wardrobe. Download the companion pattern for free by following the instructions in the description below. And while you're there, take a moment to subscribe. Well, there's no time to waste. Let's get started. The normal tension for this project is 10, but because I'm going to be doing a special cast on, I'm going to bring it down to 8, just for the very first row. My uh, knit, my carriages are set to NN for knit knit, and I'm setting my row counter to 000. With my needle selector, I'm starting with the needle number 31 on the, on the right. I'm pulling out every other needle to work position. And I'm ending with needle number 30 on the left. I'm taking my cast on comb, centering it, butting it up against the gate pegs with the hooks facing me. Alrighty, let's thread up. Now I'm going to leave about 15 inches of tail, and I'm going to rebut up the the cast on comb, even with the gate pegs, and I'm going to knit across one row. What this does is it allows me to drop the cast on comb and catch all the bars in between those needles. I'm making sure on this end that my yarn is running freely. Okay? Now, I'm going to do two more things. I'm going to crank up my um, tension or my stitch size to a full 10. And I'm going to bring out the, um, starting with needle 31 on the left side, bring out all the needles that I left in. Um, uh, out of work position so that I have 62 needles all together on the bed and they're all in work. Now I'm going to put a few weights on because I do not want my cast on comb to come off and I am going to knit a total of 42 rows. So I have one row already. This is rows for me. Okay, isn't that a pretty variegated? Okay, now I'm going to, before I do anything else, I'm going to bring every other needle out, starting with the second needle from the right, every other needle out to hold position. Now I'm not in hold, but I'm bringing them out to hold for a very good reason. I'm going to remove the weights from my cast on comb, but I'm going to make sure that I don't pull up on it because I want it to stay down. Okay, now, this is the fun part. See this little rod? This is a, uh, a steel plated rod. It has a little heft. I could probably go a little heavier, but this is a quarter inch and that's all the hardware store had. I got it for under $5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down, I'm going to pull down on the cast on comb. I'm going to lay the rod into the hem. Okay, and I'm moving my clothespin out of the way, and starting on the right, move that out of the way so I don't bump into it, I'm going to rehang those open loops on to the needles, and they're perfectly spaced because it's the cast on comb. So now I'm going to lay the cast on comb down with the hook still in it. The reason I need to do that is because on the on the leftmost side, there's one needle that doesn't have a loop, and that's because it's on the very, very end loop. And so I need to bring that up and hang it on that last needle. Now I can just unhook my cast on comb and set it aside because I don't need it anymore for this project. And here I have 
all my stitches in place. So now I'm going to knit 20 more rows. That's to our next time saving. So I'm knitting that one carefully just to make sure I get everything. And see how it hung that hem really quick and really fast and really nice? Now I'm going to put a little bit of weight on the edges because I want to make sure they all knit off. Okay, now I'm going to knit until row counter is 62. Okay, we're at row 62. Now we're going to uh, decrease our number of needles we're in that are in work. And we're going to do it a special way using our eyelet tool, or actually our garter bar, by creating eyelets. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my uh, needle selector that selects one every four. And starting on the left, I'm going to pull out. You can start on the right, doesn't really matter, but I'm just doing it from left to right just because I practice it this way. And I'm kind of used to it. So I pulled out every needle, uh, every fourth needle to hold position. Now, then I'm going to take my other needle selector and push them back, my needle pusher. And I'm going to push them back to upper work position. What that just did was put the stitch behind the latch. Now, I'm going to bring up all the needles that were in work before into upper work position. What that does is it pushes, uh, it leaves the stitches in the hooks. Now, this is where the fun begins. I'm going to move my carriage as far to the right as I can because I now am taking um, my uh, stopper plate for my uh, Chris Crafter uh, garter bar and I'm bringing all the needles on this half up into hold position and I'm dropping the plate down to lock those needles in place. Then I'm taking my other half because I have so many needles in work and I wanted to do it on a hat or something so that you could see how this works. It works all the way across the board. And I'm going to pull the other half up and drop the plate in place. Now, I've had to use my small connector on, to connect my uh, two pieces. And now I'm going to take the back side of it, the flat side of it, and I am going to push the needles back, or the, the knitting back, just enough to get those needles to open up their latches. Now the ones that are left that are not open are the ones where we have the stitch behind the latch. So then I take my little card and slide down there and open them up. Now the reason I push that back just enough is because otherwise, if I don't push it back just enough, you'll find that this is what I found out, is that with the stitches behind the latches, it keeps trying to close the hooks, the latches on the hook. And so I need them all open, so I have to push it back enough to even it out and keep all the latches open while I do this part. And that is, I'm going to put my um, garter bar onto the hooks and then I'm going to pull my knitting. Now the only the stitches that were behind the latches actually will actually slip on to the garter bar. Can you see every fourth stitch? See how every fourth stitch is on there? Okay, once I've done that I'm going to push back toward the bed with the garter bar and what that does is it opens latches. Then I lift the garter bar off. I'm doing it slowly so you can see what I'm doing and I'm shifting it down one needle and then I'm going to simply flatten it out so it's flush or even with the needle bed and just push all the knitting back on to the bed. Okay. Now, I have to take my plates off. And 
I'm taking my needle selector because I still haven't decreased yet. Okay, so all I did was move all these stitches over one needle. Now every one that had been moved is empty. So I'm just going to take those out of work. Okay, so now I'm ready to knit the next row. So I'm going to push this back. Well, I'm not quite ready. Over on my carriage, because there's this extra space, if I left the tension at 10, it would be too loose. So I'm bringing down a full number. And now I'm going to proceed to knit four more rows. Was that easy? Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to start with the center needle of the, th the re three remaining needles. I'm going to bring those out to hold position and then I'm going to use my needle pusher to push them back into upper work position. I just put the stitches behind the latches. Now I'm going to bring up all the other working needles to upper working position. Push my carriage off to the side. Pull these all out and drop the stopper plate in place. Pull these all out to hold position and drop the stopper plate in place. With the garter bar I'm going to just push the stitches back just slightly, just slightly to get all the latches more or less open except for the ones that are behind the, um, for the stitches that are behind the latches. And then I'm going to use my cutoff card and open the rest of them. I'm going to then put my hook in place and I can feel that there isn't anything obstructing it. So I know I can pull all these safely to the garter bar. And once again, only the ones that were behind the latches actually have a stitch that'll go to the garter bar. The rest of them are in the hooks. Once I've done that, push it open to open all the latches, lift up, move it over one, and then even it out, put it, put the garter bar in place, and then push them all back on. Now this one kind of hung up, so let's see what happened there. Okay, and I obviously didn't get that a clean break on that one. So I'm going to pick that up with my eyelid tool because these things happen. I'm going to put it on the appropriate needle. Okay, I checked my work. It looks good other than that little... Rascal, I've got away from me. Take my stop plates off. Push my knitting back. Once again, with the every fourth needle selector, I'm going to align it with those ones that are empty and push those back out of work. And that would be include the end one. So it worked out perfectly. Great. Okay, now back to the carriage. I'm going to bring it down another full uh, stitch size and knit four more rows. All right. Now, with my pusher, my needle pusher, I'm going to bring all these out hold position because we are just about done. Now, I'm going to unthread my carriage and I'm going to cut my yarn leaving about 18 inches. I'm usually pretty generous with that because I just don't want to run out of yarn when I'm sewing it. Okay, and I'm going to thread my double eye needle. Now, 
You can thread a double eye needle or you can just use a plain old darning needle like or a yarn needle or a plastic yarn needle, whichever your preference is. I just like to pull them all out to um, a hold position because it puts the stitches behind the latch. Now, I can just simply take the end that's long and just pop them off from underneath. Once you get about halfway, you can thread them on. I could have also removed the rod at this point, too. That might be convenient. And I'm just going to pull down on the rest of these. And as I go, just pop them off. And see, I'm working under the needles. That way I'm not in danger of catching myself on the hooks. Okay, and just for safety purposes, I always push all my needles back in because I have cut myself on that machine. Okay, so now we have a perfectly good little hat. But now, at the top, I am going to run this double eye needle through those same loops and I'm doing it like this, okay, so that it gets a nice full pickup. And I, by doing it at least twice, our first one's on there already. This is the second one. And I'm going to keep pulling until I get my loose end. Oops. I guess that's it. <laughs> Here it is. Well, it's not going to, that double is nice and dull. Okay, and sometimes I do a third one just for fun. This one will come down from the top and stitch is worked by just inserting your hook and coming out. Now I'm coming out one stitch from the edge. With that, I'm going to leave this one up here for a minute. I'm going to take a second darning needle and thread it. And I'm going to show you the easiest way to put this hat together. You may not see it, but there's a there's a slight indentation where the hem hangs. So I've threaded my lower needle and I'm bringing it up one stitch from the edge in that indentation. Okay. Then I'm bringing this one over here and I'm looking for that same indentation. That's my guide. If that doesn't match it'll look like the hat is not made properly. Okay, so it's right here. On variegated, it's not so obvious. So I'm inserting it there and pulling up a loop, pulling the loop up. Now, I can continue going back and forth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the outsides See how I cross over and go in exactly where I came out of and then go under two bars. And once I get about an inch or so, I'm going to put my finger on it and give it a little tug just to tighten it up, but not to bunch it up. You don't want to bunch it up because it's hard to get it loose again. Once you reach the bottom edge, continue seaming the inside of the hem. Lastly, work from the top or bottom to complete the seam.
isn't that an adorable little hat? Wow! We made it in 28 minutes flat. Just be aware the pom-pom will take 15 minutes more, but it is well worth it. And that's another video. I hope you enjoyed the time-saving tips and techniques buried in this video. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications of upcoming videos. Happy machine knitting!